Hello, I am so excited to be back with another tutorial for you. This time I am going to be covering three tips for better illustrations. These are just three of the many tips that I use to improve my illustrations, but I wanted to keep this video brief. So if you want to see more of these bite-sized tips, please let me know in the comments and I will be sure to create more YouTube videos just like this. Okay, before we get started, my name is Natasha Polozenko, aka Natashka. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and even Pinterest, where I share more quick mini tips and tricks, so be sure to follow along there too. Okay, so let's dive in. The very first tip that I want to share with you is this one. Referencing is better than tracing. Now, although I think that tracing can be an awesome way to practice and to get more comfortable with drawing and using digital tools, it ultimately doesn't make for great work. The truth is that anyone can trace something. And when it comes to growing as an artist and developing your own unique style and point of view, you need to step away from using tracing as a crutch. And a great way to do this is by referencing. So photos, artwork, or illustrations can be interesting prompts and can serve to be a great source of inspiration. And that's what art is really all about. There are no original ideas or artwork. Everything that is created is some amalgamation or remix of past influences, experiences, inspirations. So embrace that and use it to your advantage. That being said, this does not mean that you have the license to go out and reference your favorite artist, photographer, or creator and call it a day. This isn't okay. Even if you credit and tag them, you could really land yourself in hot water. So to be safe, use content that you yourself have created. So for example, drawing from photographs that you've taken yourself. I have been known to take photographs of myself or my friends in certain poses or positions so that I can use the photos as reference in my own illustrations um, but another solution is to find images that are in the public domain so what does that mean so this article from fairuse.stamford.edu states that the term public domain refers to creative materials that are not protected by intellectual property laws such as copyright trademark or patent laws the public owns these works, not an individual author or artist. Anyone can use public domain work without obtaining permission, but no one can ever own it. So this means that we can use these works in our own work, draw from them, change, manipulate, edit, and we won't run into copyright issues, which is what we want. So you may be wondering how you can find images that are in the public domain. Now, there are a bunch of websites that have online galleries that you can search through. In fact, a lot of big art museums and, institu and institutions have selections, uh, have sections dedicated to art that is in the public domain, and I will put them in the description below. But the National Gallery of Art, the Met, the Smithsonian, just to name a few, all provide access to open source public domain art. But other than this, it is also helpful to remember that as a general rule of thumb, that work public published before 1923 is now in the public domain, but it is always worth double checking. So to get back on topic, as I mentioned earlier, my first tip to better illustrations is to reference and not trace. Now, even though technically speaking, you're still allowed to trace public domain images directly, I want to challenge you not to do this. Let me walk you through how I would use an image like this and start referencing to create my illustration. So if you have taken my course, Illustration Style Academy, you may already have a set of character sketches that show how the body proportions of your character look. These are helpful to keep all your illustrations standardized and in the same style. So you'll see here that I've pulled in one of my base character forms next to my reference image. And listen, don't worry if you don't have something like this on hand. You can use the general body proportions of an illustration you've created in the, in the past, or you can press pause and create something quickly now before moving on to the rest of the tutorial. So you'll see here that first and foremost, I try to line up my sketch with the reference image. I will then bring it over as an overlay and start tweaking the illustration, adding in the details, the poses and general content of the reference image without outright tracing what's underneath. 
So you can see that this is a process of sketching and sketching, the refining, until it's exactly how you like it. Using this approach, you can be inspired by other art while staying true to your own unique style. And I mentioned my course, Illustration Style Academy, before. And if you want to learn more, I'll drop a link in the description. Now, my second tip, if you follow me on TikTok, you may have heard this one before. It is so simple, but so, so, so important when it comes to bettering your art and illustration, and that is mirroring. Now, what I mean by this is while you are creating throughout the whole process, you need to be flipping your work horizontally. This will help you notice mistakes that you may have missed. It really helps you look at your artwork with fresh eyes. So as I mentioned, do this as often as you can. There's nothing worse than getting to a point in your art where you can't easily make changes without undoing hours of work. So flip your work and start to try and notice if there is something that is looking off and fix it while you're in the flipped view before flipping back to the original. So when I flipped this sketch, I was actually quite happy with how it was looking, which is actually quite a bummer because I would want to show you how I go about editing and sketching in this flipped view. But most of the time, one of the biggest things that I end up tweaking is the shape of the head as well as the eyes. A lot of the time I'll mirror and notice that the head is looking wonky or one of the eyes is way too small and sometimes to get things feeling perfect i will use the warp or distort tool in procreate or photoshop to push things around until i like how it's looking and then i will flip it back to its original and once i get to a more finished state in photoshop again i mentioned before i'm going to flip it again to see how things are looking and at this stage, I can use the warp or distort tool, but I also love the liquify tool. It is incredible and provides so much control. I can bloat or pucker to make elements bigger or smaller, or I can push and pull pixels around, which is amazing when you need to make those last minute changes to your illustration. And again, I'm not making a whole lot of changes to mine at this time, but once you're done, flip your artwork back and it will be as if it is magically better. And another side note, if you do more physical artwork like painting or sketching, I've heard from a few of my students that some people will literally hold their artwork to a mirror uh, to catch mistakes. So keep that in mind. All right, now for the third and final tip, and this one is all about the finishing touches that make your illustrations pop. And it's important to note that this will vary from person to person depending on your personal style and the effects you want to achieve, but I will walk you through my process so that you can have a better idea of how you can achieve this for yourself. So once I have my illustration, I will go through and add filters over the top. First and foremost, I want to change the levels of just the character. So with the character layer selected, I will go over and select this icon here that looks like a circle split into two, and I will select levels. Once this adjustment layer pops up, I want to apply it only to my character layers so it doesn't change the background layer. The way I do this is by clicking on the layer, holding down the option key on a Mac and hovering over the line between the two layers. And I get this little icon that looks like a square and arrow. Once I see this, I click, and now my adjustment layer will only be applied to the character layers. And from here, I can just go ahead and start messing around with the levels. This will be different for everyone, but the goal is to just tweak these until you feel you like how things are looking. And now if I toggle that layer on and off, I can see how much of a difference that has made already. Now, I want to slightly tweak the hue and saturation, so I'm gonna make another adjustment layer. Again, I'm going to apply it to the layer below and start tweaking those values. So a lot of the time, these adjustments are super minor and simple, but it's these small tweaks that really make for better illustrations. Something else that I sometimes like to play around with is adding a little more shading to one side of my character. So by creating a new blank layer and once again applying it to the layers below, I can start to add in a little bit of color in here. 
And yes, this is looking super weird, but this is when blending modes come in handy. I will typically scroll through the different blending modes until I like what I see. So in this case, I like how overlay looks. So I'm going to leave it here and just tweak it a little. And I'm also going to do the same on the other side with a light color. And again, picking a blending mode that I like. Now, I also want to tweak the plant in the background slightly, and you could do this in whatever way you want, but I'm going to duplicate my background, drag it above the plant, and make sure to apply it directly to the plant. And then, once again, go through the blending modes until I like how everything is looking. All right, and I'm also going to add another brightness and contrast adjustment layer that I'm going to apply above everything. And I'm just going to now duplicate all my layers um, because I just want to have them there as a backup in case I decide to go back. But for one of those layers, I want to flatten everything so, um, so that I can add a little bit more green. And I do this by going up to filter, going down to noise, and selecting add noise. From here, I can pick how grainy I want things to be. I'm being super subtle with it here, but you can go as crazy or subtle as you like, if you decide to add grain at all. Now, I think I'm done, but this is how my illustration looked before the finishing touches and after. In my opinion, it is a world of difference and it really helps bring things to life. Okay, so that's it for today's tutorial. I hope these three tips were helpful and that you will use them to help level up your own illustrations. Once again, let me know if you want more tips like this by hitting that thumbs up or dropping me a comment. And if you want to follow me on my other platforms, I am at Natashko on Instagram and TikTok. And I am also on Pinterest and I'm, I will link all of the information in the description below. Also, if you want to learn about uh, Illustration Style Academy, my course in which I help creatives find and develop their own unique personal character illustration styles, I'll also link that below. So thank you again and see you next time. Bye for now.